Welcome back. Right now we have Nexus IT here with us for their monthly tech tips and more. And today we have Earl Foote right here on the couch with Eric Sessions and Jake Hiller to talk about growth within their own company as well as Cybersecurity Month. Thank you for being here. Hey, it's Thanks our pleasure. Us. Appreciate it. I want so to start to with here. some exciting organizational <clears throat> parts of Nexus IT in that you had this merger recently and now you've announced new roles, your team is growing, you have a big five-year plan. So tell me more about that, Earl. Yeah, fantastic. Um, this is something we're really excited about. Um, you know, when, when we announced the merger of our two entities of Intellitex and Nexus IT, um, we were very straightforward that we were going to take 60 to 90 days to flesh out, um, you know, how the merger was going to come together, how we're going to integrate the companies and the teams and, and you know, who was going to be in what sort of positions. Um, in that process, we, we created some task forces um, and those task forces had stakeholders you know, from, from different teams on both different teams. And um, that gave us an opportunity to evaluate, look at what our capabilities were, um, who meshed the best in different teams and different scenarios and settings. Um, and where you know where talent and capabilities uh, lie, and so in that process, um, we actually reorganized completely Nexus IT into a team of teams model, um, and we have now um, placed Eric in the COO or Chief o Operating Officer role of Nexus IT, and Jake in the CRO or Chief Revenue Officer, um, you know, roles at Nexus IT. Um, those are you know in a growing organization um, as we've needed to have more executive horsepower, um, you know, more leadership capabilities to help take us to that next level of where we want to go and what that five-year you know, plan looks like. These have been very strategic moves um, by us, you know, looking at um, these gentlemen's capabilities and their talents and those of their team and, and where we can add the most value. So, um, you know, Jake and his teams now um, he's managing five or six teams. Um, they're all over revenue generation and client success. Um, and Eric and his teams are all over making sure that we're, we're humming um, like a well-oiled machine and that you know, our client experience is always top notch. Um, and so uh, uh, you know, it's all a process. It'll take us it's still another you know, 90 to 120 days to really settle into that team of teams sort of reorganization. Um, but uh, it's, it's an active work in progress. Um, these two gentlemen and their teams and, and our teams have all stepped to the plate, um, you know, and it's been fun to watch as, you know, little by little, we're, we're uh, beginning to, to kind of bring these teams together. Uh, we've got a lot of lofty plans and ideas about how we're going to continue to enhance the customer experience um, and how we're going to continue to grow, you know, this organization here in Utah and regionally and nationally. And, um, and so you know, we're just excited. We're jazzed about where we're going and jazzed about having the, you know, these gentlemen uh, helping in that process. And we're excited as well. It's been really interesting to watch this, the merger, the change, the organizational structure of it all. And Jake, tell me more about your role as CRO and some of your goals and objectives within that. Thank you, yeah, so um, CRO over revenue, um, which is very exciting. It's a f fun side of the business. We're working with, you know, how, how can we offer better offerings to our existing customers? What needs do they have? I mean, it's Cybersecurity Month. And with that, what sort of gaps do people have in their business? Um, we love these sort of um, opportunities to go to our customers and let them know of the, the different changes that are happening in the market, what sort of products are there to help and protect them. Um, even little things when it comes to cybersecurity training, we, we've seen a lot that the human firewall is something that we really need to work on. We're, you know, we can have systems in place, we can have the right security in place, but the employee, the human firewall, can be a, one of the largest gaps in the business. And so we, we get to focus on, on those sort of things. And then obviously new, um, new customers, um, new, new markets that we can tackle. It's very exciting. Um, I love our sales team and um, our different sales engineers. It's very exciting. Um, very fun group of people to work with and there's so many ideas so much um, passion to move forward and li like Earl said um, there's a lot of horsepower behind what we're doing and um, we're ready um, to charge forward I mean pedal to the metal we're, we're super excited 
And Eric, your COO, you've been in the tech field for 16 years. I can't even imagine the amount of monumental change you've seen <laughs> within that. But tell me yeah. about this new role here. Yeah, so <clears throat> stepping into the COO role, COO role for Nexus, um, it, it's a lot bigger dynamic team. Um, so that uh, is fun and exciting to be able to have um, more capable talent to work with. And um, I oversee all of the technical teams. So everything from our service desk team to our professional services and um, our projects team as well. And so it's really all the people that are boots on the ground making a difference for, for the customers and uh, just making sure that we're staffed appropriately, that we're uh, able to respond in timely manners uh, to get those issues resolved for the customers, as well as making sure that we have uh, the adequate talent on the team to be able to uh, adapt to the changing industry. IT is changing so fast and like Jake was talking about with cybersecurity, um, that is ever changing and it's changing faster than, than the rest of us really realize it. And so it's important that we have uh, adequate talent on the team to be able to grow and move into um, those different areas as they uh, come about in the market. And in terms of cybersecurity, October is cybersecurity month. How are, I know this is a part of your day-to-day -day business, a huge part, in fact. You know, we hear the news about data breaches and all of that, but for you all, this is something that you are enmeshed in consistently. What are you seeing right now, Earl? Yeah, um, I guess first and form foremost is that, um, you know, what is IT infrastructure and IT and technology within a business is, is no longer separable from cybersecurity and compliance. Those are, they, they all go very, very hand in hand. Um, and in today's world, you know, with the cyber landscape evolving so quickly, um, and you know, situations like COVID and like the Russia, you, you know, Ukrainian conflict that have um, been catalysts, you know, and fueled that fire, uh, we, we just see a, a massive uptick in malicious cyber activity and malicious actors. <clears throat> and, um, you know, a very, real reality for businesses to, to take that seriously and to take proper precautions and measures in order for, to protect their data, to protect sensitive information about their clients and their, their people, um, to protect their IP, right? Uh, and so, um, you know, there's a lot of things that we can talk about, about best practices and things that businesses and users can be doing. As, you know, as, as Jake alluded to, in the last few years, there's been a few reports that have come out showing that 85 to 95 percent of all cyber incidents, um, they involve either um, negligent, erroneous, or malicious user behavior, right? Um, as IT teams, we can deploy a ton of different technical solutions to protect an organization, but if a user decides to click on a, you know, a, the wrong leak, link in, an, a, excuse me, in a malicious email, there's not a lot we can do about that, right? Um, or if you have a malicious inside user, which is more prevalent than people actually think, um, you know, there, there's only so much we can do to protect from those things. And so um, creating that barrier to human firewall is one of the most important things. And maybe, you know, my partners here will have some, some suggestions of how you create that human firewall. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious about that, both Jake and Eric, but before we get there, I'm. If you could kind of pull back the curtain a little bit of the business standpoint, Jake, and you are generally in charge of creating revenue. You're bringing on mid-sized businesses to help with all of their tech needs to include cybersecurity. So how much do you prioritize cybersecurity when you're having these discussions with businesses? Like Earl said, um, I think in the past the discussions were a little different. We would talk more in regards to what's your infrastructure, what are some of your support needs, you know, some of just what are your basic underlying needs. Um, now, cybersecurity isn't something that people can choose to work with or not. It is a fact of our everyday life that um, you have to be protecting your data, you have to be securing your endpoints, and then the whole work from home. Um, with you know that COVID really um, exploded, that that changed the dynamic again. So people were starting to understand the importance of cybersecurity. But then when everyone was working from home, we actually saw a huge uptick in attacks or 
people who at home, if their networks weren't set up properly, were then a vulnerability for the company networks. And so as we're meeting with um, different companies, we try to avoid the scare tactics. A lot of people try to scare people into cybersecurity when cybersecurity is really there as a partner for them. It's there to protect them. It's there to help them function and really lead the charge. People who are engaged in proper cybersecurity are able to be ahead of the market and they're avoiding um, issues, but it also helps with best practices. It helps them run their business more smoothly. So it's not just about security, it's about a mindset and how we're protecting our data, how we're protecting our customers. And that's for the, each business that they need to work on. How are they protecting their customers and, and the community they serve? So it's, it's a kind of a holistic approach, which is exciting. And the more people get um, educated about it, the better everyone's gonna do. And so that, like we said, we love the education side. We love Cybersecurity Month and those sort of things because it expands everyone's overall knowledge of it so they understand and they can see the value when, when we're bringing them those tools and those offerings. And Eric, as COO, you're involved in cybersecurity not only for your clients, for the businesses that you work with, but also for the company itself. What are some best practices that you recommend for individuals, for companies in this arena? Yeah, so there's a lot of different things that, that can be done. Um, we recommend using a, a password manager um, so that you don't have the same password for every login. Uh, you don't want your social media login to be the same as, as your bank account. Um, we can't unfortunately um, control or force users to do that, but uh, like Jake was talking about, educating them on why we need to have unique passwords is critical. Um, we internally um, go through trainings ourselves. Um, we have uh, phishing campaigns that we will send out to basically trick our users into seeing if they fall victim to a potential threat. Um, we can also do that with our clients and we, we do that with many of them. Um, so that way it's a non-malicious email that, that has um, things that are awry in it and, and forcing people to uh, make an educated decision on it. Is this a legit email or is it not? Is, are we looking at the hyperlinks? Um, are we looking at the sender's email? Uh, is it actually from that sender or is it something different? Um, and so if people fall victim to it, it enrolls them in an online training to basically bring them up to speed on what they need to be looking for. And we're doing that again for our internal team and for our customers. And then um, simple things like just take a step back and always look for um, any possible pitfalls. Um, don't think that people are always trying to send you money via email. <laughs> um, there's tons of emails out there having um, spam filtering in place in front to, to filter out as much of that as possible is critical. Um, and then like Jake talked about, having endpoint security and things on devices to just help mitigate any potential threat that way. And Earl, where's the best place to get more information about Nexus IT, about everything that you all are doing? Sure, uh, uh, LinkedIn is a great place to, to find us. Our website, nexusitc.net, and uh, locally here in Park City at 435-487-9099. Perfect, well thank you so much, Earl, Jake, Eric, for being here today. I really always appreciate your great text tips every month, and it's also been an honor to watch Nexus IT grow and change over the past six to eight years and become the company you are today. I know many people look to it as an example in the tech world, so thanks for that and thanks for your time. Thanks so much thanks for, for having us. Always yeah. a pleasure.